Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Hontamang General Soholudi. I am the author of Promortalism, a study of existential antinatalism and existential promortalism. It's now available on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback format. You can find it through the link in the channel description. So in this video, I will be giving my opinions as an antinatalist and promotalist on the so-called Fermi paradox. So for anyone who doesn't know what that is, here's the Wikipedia definition. The Fermi paradox is the discrepancy between the lack of conclusive evidence of advanced extraterrestrial life and the apparently high likelihood of its existence. As a 2015 article put it, if life is so easy, someone from somewhere must have come calling by now. So the paradox was formulated by the Italian-American physicist Enrico Fermi, hence the name Fermi Paradox. So basically, if the emergence of life in the universe should be easy, it should be common, then why do we see no evidence? Why does it seem like planet Earth is the only place where a life exists where is everybody so it's a very old question apparently enrico fermi had asked this back in 1950 so and of course he is a high profile scientist so obviously over all these years people have come up with so many uh, different uh, possible explanations for this apparent anomaly now like i said there's a lot of reasons but um, from what i've uh, seen i think that you can basically just split them into two groups so the first group of reasons basically just say something along the lines of the emergence of life is actually quite rare or that the emergence of intelligent life that even if you do have life you know the life you might actually have might be just simple life just like the animals that we have here that might be the kind of life that is common but it's extremely rare to find very intelligent complex life with you know human level intelligence so for the second group of answers they state that the emergence of intelligent life might actually be common and so advanced intelligence may exist but for some reason they do not establish uh, communication with us some of these reasons include the idea that perhaps they destroy themselves through wars resource depletion perhaps they make uh, dangerous artificial intelligence or perhaps they destroy others other civilizations due to greed paranoia or aggression um, maybe they do broadcast detectable signals but only for a short time maybe they are so advanced that they no longer live on planets perhaps they are too far away and maybe perhaps there is an unwillingness to even try to communicate this could be out of disinterest in like human beings perhaps we are very primitive and maybe they see us as just like insects or maybe they don't communicate because they are afraid uh, that perhaps other life forms may be aggressive communication uh, might be dangerous so between these two categories of answers i would mostly agree with the first uh, category which states that um, it's actually quite a rare for life or you know specifically intelligent life you know with like a human like intelligent human level intelligence to emerge generally as for the second group of answers i would actually disagree with most of the answers with the exception of the ones that state that you know life intelligent life uh, tends towards self-destruction you know before it actually becomes highly advanced so the self-destruction here could be because of competition greed but then another factor that could lead to i think extinction uh, like i said this is from an antinatalist and promotalist perspective so besides just the typical reasons that you have was another reason uh, that you know in which a civilization could actually just destroy itself would be when ideas of 
antinatalism and promotalism actually just become you know widely accepted i mean as intelligent life progresses obviously there's going to be so many discoveries that are just inevitable so many questions scientific questions philosophical questions that are inevitably going to be asked right and we can see it here with like human civilizations there are a lot of like for example like concepts in mathematics were discovered independently by like different civilizations in different parts of the world and maybe in like different periods of time so it just shows you that there's certain ideas that are just inevitably going to be discovered the more intelligent a species becomes the more advanced it becomes so in the early days of any civilization when they're still primitive all they care about is just survival right that's the only thing that matters so even though they may be a little more advanced they use stone tools and you know weapons still you know they're not too different from like animals they also just care about survival that's it and everything they do all the technology they develop is for the specific purpose of surviving and making life easier but then of course it becomes more complex as time goes on people become more intelligent more skeptical critical thinking becomes more common and it's just inevitable that at some point you know they will start to question the survival game which nature has forced them to play for you know however how long the species has existed that you know it's like well in the early days it was all just about survival but then the world became more modern and comfortable to a point where we no longer had to worry about surviving in the wild anymore so now the question that we ask is what what's next after that now i mean it's like we can keep going we can keep making ourselves more advanced we can develop more advanced technology we can invent time travel and teleportation and build spaceships and Okay, go to other planets, colonize the planet, you know, and then we can develop artificial intelligence, which might gain self-awareness. Then we'll achieve the singularity. We'll all be cyborgs. You know, we'll have uh, genetic engineering. We'll also be complex. You'll be able to hack your genes. You can do all these fancy things, but it's like, I mean, what's the point anymore, you know? why bother i mean why why spend all this time and effort doing all this stuff i say like, why 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 do we continue the civilization thing even now you know what i mean when we back in our primitive days you know we didn't know any better we were just following instinct just our primal instinct just like just like you know wild animals all they care about is just surviving but i mean now we're more intelligent so we can actually question our actions and was this realized very obvious fact that there's something inherently contradictory about this game of survival which nature is forcing us to play which is that if there is no life there's no need to make life easier the the, the aliens will think to themselves look at the other planets that never you know had any life there, there, there were no problems on these planets there was no need to invent anything to cure any disease there was no need for politics and i said there's no need to solve any problems and so it was just become really so obvious to them that um, rather than wasting you know that time and effort doing all these other strange things like conquering the galaxy they will just voluntarily just by their own choice make their own civilization to collapse they will just bring an end to it a final end to this meaningless continuation of civilization so like i said this is actually a more plausible reason as to why aliens don't waste their time uh, trying to contact other life outside their planet right this this is more sensible than the other silly answers that uh, i had mentioned earlier
it is more likely that intelligent life essentially just loses interest in um, the whole civilization stuff and just intentionally self-destructs just intentionally causes its own collapse in regards to human civilization hopefully this is the direction in which we are heading because you know we can absolutely do it uh, we, we we have you know nuclear weapons and we've also proven uh, that we even have the capabilities to engineer deadly viruses so we can do it and so that does give me hope you know, it's like, yeah, if I was the president of the United States, uh, having access to the largest uh, arsenal of nuclear weapons, I mean, wow. Uh, let's, let's just say I would make very good use of them, and I would, I would get straight to work on day one, you know what I mean? Anyway, um, so basically, that's, um, that's, <laughs> that's all. I mean, I don't know. I guess I should end the video now because, you know, it's starting to get, uh, things are starting to get genocidal. So I should probably stop talking now. So that's the end of the video. As always, thanks for watching.